All right, how can you tell if a reaction is spontaneous or not? I.e., if I just put all the stuff inside a beaker, how am I going to be able to tell if the reaction is just going to go or whether it's going to need a little prodding? Well, the answer lies in this equation. This is the equation to calculate the Gibbs free energy of a reaction. Delta G is the key. All you need is the enthalpy change of the reaction, or delta H. There's lots of ways you can calculate that. You can get it from enthalpies of formation, stuff like that. You, all you need is the temperature in Kelvin, and you need the entropy change. Now, entropy is a measure of disorder, and usually they'll just give you what the change in entropy, or delta S, is. Here's the deal. If this is negative, it's spontaneous. Spontaneous if delta G is negative. That's all you need to do. If they give you delta H and the temperature and the delta S, plug it into your equation. If this is negative, boom, spontaneous. Here's a typical question that you would get asked. Here's a reaction. Delta H is 158 kilojoules. Delta S is 411 joules per Kelvin. At what temperature will this reaction be spontaneous? Well, hold on. We have a formula for that. The R formula is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. What do we know? Well, we know delta H is 158 kilojoules. I'm going to convert it to joules because I notice this is in joules. That's going to happen more often than not. I don't have my temperature, but I do have my entropy, 411 joules per Kelvin. Now, I want this to be spontaneous, which means this has to be negative. If this is negative, then that means this, which is delta G, has to be less than or equal to zero. See how I'm, uh, oh, maybe not equal to, maybe just less than zero. <laughs> Oops. And all you have to do is solve this equation for T. I'm gonna move my T times 411 to the other side of my equal sign here. T times 411 joules per Kelvin, 158,000 joules. How do you undo this multiplication? You divide both sides by 411 joules per Kelvin. Now what I want to point out here is that on this side, joules cancels with joules and you're left with Kelvin as an answer. These two cancel each other out entirely and you end up with T must be greater than, I'm going to need a calculator for this one, 158000 divided by 411. 384. All right, so what this means is that this reaction will be spontaneous if the temperature is 384 degrees Kelvin or higher. You can always drive any reaction to be spontaneous as long as your temperature is high enough. Give me a million degrees, lots of reactions are going to be spontaneous. That's my point. So anyways, your keys are it's a spontaneous reaction if delta G is negative. It's either going to be so easy that you just plug your numbers in or you may have to set delta G to be negative and then solve for T if you want to find the temperature above which the reaction is spontaneous. All right, guys, stay G. Best of luck.